Hey hey, and welcome back to the Quest for Completion Live Edition. This is episode 4 of the series, and let me give you guys the rundown for what I have planned for this episode, and also show you guys the stats that we have at the same time. So, rundown. I have three main goals for this episode. The first one is I want to get level 78 on all of our builders, because right now, we have a bunch of transcendent gear lying around, and we can't actually use any of it. So yeah, first thing, level 78. Second is getting ourselves a mana gathering weapon for both our Jester and our Monk. Neither of them have a very good mana gathering weapon, and uh, that's going to be a super important mechanic for like any of the hard maps in the future, so we need to get one. That's the second goal, mana gathering. Third one is uh, Genie. This one might sound a bit weird, but the thing is, our current Genie is a random luck reward that we got from doing a map. And I don't want you guys to have to rely on random luck to be able to follow along with the series. So I'm going to be doing a map that has a 100% guaranteed drop of a genie. So, you know, just in case you aren't able to get the genie from luck, you're able to follow along with the series either way. Those are the three goals of the episode. And uh, one thing very quickly, the gesture and monk mana gathering weapon, these are going to be two different things. And I'll explain why later. But for now, uh, how are we going to do all this? Well, tavern defense. This map has a lot of XP, so we'll be able to get to level 78 pretty easily. Uh, along with that, wave 15 of this map on survival gives a genie as a 100% guaranteed drop, so that's that. And there will be enough enemies on here that we'll be able to get the mana gathering weapon as a random drop. But, to be able to actually, you know, get the mana gathering weapon, we have to first unlock it by doing Halloween Spooktacular on Insane Hardcore, or Nightmare Hardcore. Actually, you don't have to do it on Hardcore, I don't think, but we're going to do it on a Hardcore anyways. <sighs> Sorry, <laughs> I've done that intro like uh, uh, maybe 250 times now, and um, that's like the first good take I have for it. So yeah, mana gathering weapon. This map, this map, uh, Halloween Spooktacular has a very unique feature in it, where it unlocks a new set of items from it, along with skins. Um, it unlocks a new set of items just as like a random reward you can get from enemies or just map rewards. And one of those items is the Lupine Bow. It's a huntress weapon. And it's super, super good for gathering mana because it shoots really, really fast. It has five projectiles. Uh, it doesn't do that much damage. And it's um, it's able to pierce through enemies and walls. So it's, again, it's like super, super good for gathering mana because those three things combined uh, are like, those are like the main important things for a mana gathering weapon. You want low-ish damage on your mana gathering weapons because you don't actually want to kill the enemies. You just want to, you know bleed them for, for mana basically. That sounds terrible when I say it, but that, that's the situation. Um, this map doesn't actually give the Lupine Bow as like a guaranteed drop, which really, really sucks, but it's just, you know, just how it is. But it does also mean that we don't have to do this map on Nightmare, which is really nice. Uh, I guess actually we, we could technically do this map on Nightmare right now if we wanted to, but I I don't want to, so um, I'm not gonna. Do -do. Uh, by the way, the build for this map, uh, very basic, just slap a lightning tower, slap a lightning tower, and then upgrade the buff beams. You can stack more lightning towers if you want. Um, I probably will stack at least two lightning towers in each area, maybe three, because, you know, I want to have an easy time with it. But the main thing you really need to know for the build is when you're placing your auras here, make sure that none of the slow auras... Actually, why do we even have a slow aura at this point? Uh, make sure that none of these slow auras are able to overlap with any of the spawns. Because if these slow auras overlap with the spawns, uh, the enemies are going to take forever to get out of them because they'll be super, super slow. And as a result, you won't actually be able to complete the map in like a reasonable amount of time. Uh, you can have your weaken and strength auras cover the spawns, and it won't matter that much. All that'll mean is that you'll need to actually pay a bit more attention when it comes to like, you know repairing them because they're just going to be damaging a bunch of enemies that are mortal which means that you'll be kind of babysitting them uh, for a good amount of time do i not have my tower stacking script there we go yeah there we go that's more like it i'll, I'll place three lightning towers at each place uh we're only doing this on insane so it's pretty damn easy uh okay so the thing is the mana gathering weapons for the monk and jester are different uh, obviously, because the monk can't equip a Huntress item, so he can't use the Lupine Bow. Um, but the reason I'm not using the monk weapon, I'm not going straight for the monk weapon, is because I like the Lupine Bow a lot, basically. I really, really like the Lupine Bow as a mana gathering weapon, because I'm super, super used to getting uh, mana through Huntress items on uh, 
on Jesters. If you want to, you could skip straight ahead and go into Magus Citadel and do the Crystal Escort to get the Chicken Baller for your mana gathering weapon on your um, Monk if you wanted to, and also your Jester, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, although that would be more efficient, so I guess that's a thing. Man, I wonder if I'm going to be doing post-commentary. Sorry. Uh, it, it might sound strange, but I, I, I value a lot how well these videos are put together, I guess. Um, so I'll do like a lot of takes for certain things, and if I don't like the way that I said something, I'll just, you know, <laughs> do a bunch of voiceovers until I get it right. Or actually, I'll just do what I did right there, where I just like cut between the footage <laughs> when I have something important to say. <laughs> so I can actually put time before I actually like speak, you know? Put time, put thought in before I speak. So I might have explained this earlier already, but just in case I haven't, the Lupine Bow is going to be a random drop from any enemy once we've finished with uh, Halloween Spooktacular on Insane or Nightmare. Which means that we're not going to be able to like actually reliably get a good one, but basically any enemy can drop it on any map once we finish this. So it's pretty likely that you guys will be able to get yourselves a decent-ish Lupine Bow like I am uh, by the by the end of this, by the end of this, by, by, <laughs> by following along with the series, I guess. The Lupine Bow doesn't really have to be that good. All you really want on it is positive projectile speed, a good, a good amount of ammo reload speed, and like an element that isn't, an element that isn't ele electricity. Yes. Uh, yeah, those are like the three main things. Oh, <laughs> also <laughs> additional projectiles. You want to have additional projectiles on there, but um, you don't really care about how much damage it does. Not really. Uh, so it's kind of easy to get a good lupine bow. So you really won't have to, you really won't have to worry about it that much. Yes, words. Also, before I forget, uh, I'm going to be throwing in three extra characters on this map before we finish it, because I want to get the skin unlocks for them. It doesn't really matter that much, because we're going to be going back onto this map in the future to like do it on Nightmare Hardcore for completion's sake, but I want to get one of those skins immediately, because I really like it. And I'll show you guys what that skin is later. Or actually, if you can, try to guess which of the three characters I bring in I'm trying to get the skin for. Alright, first character... Second character, and third character, uh, you. And then I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna be talking too much because these lightning towers are super loud. Yay! That's this. That's all the skins. Yes. All right. Cool. So we finally have all the skins unlocked. Not all of them. We have like all but one skin unlocked. And let me show you guys. Uh, I guess like <laughs> why I did Halloween Spooktacular. Now that we finished Halloween Spooktacular, we have the Lupine Bow as a map reward, but more importantly, this is the skin I was talking about. Why is it so good? Why do I like it so much? Because he does a flip every time he jumps. And it, every time he does this, it makes me think it's a double jump, and I, uh, I, <laughs> I love I love this skin so much. This is, this is genuinely my favorite skin. It doesn't provide any other benefits other than the cool jump and the cool, I guess, ninja uh, <laughs> skin, but... Uh, yeah, uh, back back to back to video things. Now that we've done Halloween Spooktacular, we get the Lupine Bow, which means we can jump into Tavern Defense and get it as a random reward from there, along with our XP and also with um, Genie. Yes, so let's jump into it. Tavern Defense as a map is kind of funky. It's the first instance uh, in the series, at least, of a of a map where you don't actually have to defend one of the crystals. I will explain what I mean in a moment, but this crystal right here, in a moment right now, this crystal right here, you don't actually need to place any like major towers bit there, because unless you place down like a physical tower, like a minion or a, like a, I don't know, blockade or t I don't know, lightning tower, or maybe even reflectors or uh, you get what I mean. As long as you don't place down a physical tower over there, no ogres will pathfind their way over there and all of them will try to get to this main middle crystal here. This means that you can fo focus all of your towers, all of your main defenses on that big crystal there, and leave that other crystal, the starting one, with just an aura stack and a few gas traps so that the jins don't destroy everything, and you'll be you'll be good. That's uh, that's pretty much the key to being in this map, like with low stats. I think. Uh, it, I think honestly, it's just how everybody does this map because when you don't need to put du towards the crystal, why would you? Um, so as far as the gas traps go, try to place these two gas traps as close as you can to each other. Um, if you need to, you can decrease the size of the gas traps to make sure that they don't overlap. But uh, make sure that they're as close as possible to each other back there because you want to use as, li as little DU as possible on the buff beam that you're going to have for that area. Uh, after that, swap over to your EV and hopefully you have more speed than me, but 
slap down a 4DU buff beam right here. Doop doop. And then after that, go all the way over here. And for now, I'm just going to leave two 5DU buff beams right here, uh, right here, and right here. If you want, you can also slap down some reflectors and other stuff. But for now, uh, I'm going to be sticking with that. After you've placed down your buff beams, jump through the window and swap to your summoner and place down basically just a bunch of minions, <laughs> uh, archer minions specifically, two, three, uh, one. They don't need to be like a perfect wall because their only job is to just block the ogres from getting through and kill the ogres because uh, I don't really have high damage so I wouldn't be able to deal with the ogres otherwise. There we go. Uh, these are temporary by the way, those, those minions are temporary because we're only going to be using them for, for wave 1 since we don't actually have enough damage to deal with the ogres ourselves. Anyways, uh, if you can, try to make sure that you get some mana from these minions over here or on the other side down here um, so you're able to upgrade this main crystal, main crystal? I, I, uh, this this non-physical tower crystal by 1 at least so that the uh, auras are a bit, a, a, a bit bigger and can reach over to the enemies. Then uh, upgrade the buff beams over here and just focus these down. Um, and then it's just gathering mana. Now I have a lot of an easier, a lot of, I have a much easier time doing this because I have a genie, but uh, I don't think you should need a genie to be able to do the map. Uh, I don't think so. If you do, then you can just go straight to insane and do it, but I really doubt it. Um, maybe I should have tested for that. But either way, uh, get these two buff beams maxed out, and if you can, the auras, because you're 100% going to be using these buff beams for uh, the next step of the build. To do. Oh, and these ogres, great sources for mana. Very, very easy mana generators. Because they're very, very stupid. Uh, try to make sure you have a bunch of mana saved over, because you're also going to be building a lot in the next wave, too. Oh, actually, you're going to be doing the majority of your building in the next wave. Okay, so I have about like 2,000 mana left over um, with the ogre and what I have right now. This area over here, if you want to, you can take the gas trap and place it and make it like a bit smaller like that or so. Uh, and same thing over here, just to make sure that, you know, the enemies are going to be within range of the auras. But not super important because we'll have deadly strikers and lightning towers deal with them uh, later. Okay, so now you have your mana and you have all your stuff. You can go on to your builder. First things first is EV. Go on to your EV and sell, actually you don't need to sell anything on your EV. Place down a buff beam back here, 40 you, then place down two reflectors. They don't have to be perfect, just try to make them decent. And place them down like that, and place six reflectors, two at each choke point. Choke point, is that what they're called? Two at each uh, minion area, yes. Do -do -do. Uh, these aren't the best <laughs> buff beams, buff beams reflectors, so I apologize for that, but you don't need to be super, super accurate with them anyways. Um, although this one you want to be like a little bit cautious with, uh, which I'm not being because I'm stupid. Next, we're going to jump onto our... Who, what's this name? Uh, lightning Tower Girl. Yes, that's not the name. And we're going to place down the Lightning Towers and Deadly Strikers. So, paste these a bit farther back and stack them. You want one Deadly Striker facing this general direction, one facing this general direction, one facing this general direction. And then just spam lightning towers. You want a lot of lightning towers. Uh, the reason you want the lightning towers is because they're going to be the things that deal with the turkey later on. Um, and not your deadly strikers. Because uh, if you're like me and you have the same stats I do, your deadly strikers actually don't have enough range to uh, reach over and kill the, uh, kill the giant turkey. Although placing more lightning towers will mean a faster kill on both the cupid and the, um, what's we call it? to do uh the cupid and the snowman okay so in this area in both of these areas you want to place down a least at least two uh, mage minions and spider minions um, at least two mage minions and one spider minion in each one of these choke points uh three here if you can because this area is going to be getting battered like absolutely annihilated by the snowman he's just going to be eating stuff over here eating stuff yes that's a pg way to say it uh to do, -do, -do. And then over here, these guys don't have a buff beam, so that's why you want to place down two minions, two minions, two uh, mage minions over here. Make sure that you make a minion wall, like a proper one, so that no enemies can get through in either area. 
because if the snowman gets through and starts beating the crap out of your lightning and deadly strikers, you're probably screwed. Uh, I don't know, maybe you could make it out, but I I doubt my ability to do it. Uh, oh, I have some mana, uh, mana left over. Uh, place down that there. That's pretty much all you need, I think. So for now, just upgrade everything, and next wave, if you can, fit more um, spiders, mages, or, or archers in this area right here, because it's going to be super important to uh, make sure that this area lives. Because the, the snowman who spawns, he spawns like right here, and he just beelines it, relines it, is that the term? Beelines it straight for your uh, big stack of death towers over here. For now, just upgrade these towers, these towers, these buff beams, um, and these towers, and then after that, focus on these minions right here. Other than that, uh, there's nothing really to say. If you want to, uh, you could definitely, or actually maybe not could, maybe you should uh, upgrade this buff beam over here to make it max, because why not? And definitely, definitely, definitely max out the auras. You want these auras to be fully leveled up. Uh, not for their damage, but for their survivability. Um, source, when I did this map uh, earlier, the only reason I finished it was because I had just enough HP that my, uh, my lightning towers were able to kill the turkey in time before these auras went down. The, if the auras go down, everything goes down. That's, that's the general rule of the game. Fun fact, they improved the chest rewards from all of the uh, chests. Yes, yes, they improved chest rewards. Not like the quality, but the quantity of, of rewards that you get per chest. Which is uh, really cool. That's the wrong button. So if you see chests, definitely open them, because there's no real reason not to. Oh, and exciting news, exciting news. So apparently, over at Chromatic Games, they are finally going to be looking at Dungeon Defenders, and it looks like they're going to be adding a new hero to the game. Uh, I'll try to link the, the place that I heard about it um, in the description, but uh, that's super cool if it happens. I don't know if I fully believe it's going to happen, because companies make promises and don't deliver on them a lot, but uh, I really hope it does, because a new character for Dungeon Defenders would be game-changing. That would be super, super cool to see. And I, I really hope that it's um, it's actually all true. I kind of want to see if I can do this map with like the minimal amount of upgrades on everything, because I don't know how much this uh, genie is helping me out, but I'd rather it doesn't help me out to the point where you guys can't follow along if you don't have one. I'm, I'm pretty confident that if you really like put your mind to it, you can get everything upgraded except like the minions um, from doing this. So I'll, I'll just upgrade the auras, which I've already done, buff beams, and um, then I'll just do the, the like, I don't know, maybe at least, uh, I'll do both at least strikers and lightning towers. Why not, I guess. Plus, at the end of the day, um, you can always just do this map on insane, or just get a genie as a random reward. Also worth mentioning that you could do this map on a jester, not a jester, on a monk instead of a jester, and just spam tower boost the whole time. Uh, now, assuming you don't have a genie, it'd be a lot worse, but if you spam tower boost the whole time, it'd be a lot better for killing the bosses, because tower boost just, oh my god, even with the low tower boost I have of like 1600, it doubles, it more than doubles, it almost triples the DPS of all of my towers. So it makes the whole thing a lot faster. I just realized, I, I haven't mentioned... <laughs> That this map has bosses, yeah. So on the final wave of this map, you get three bosses. You get a big-ass snowman, you get a big-ass cupid, and you get a big-ass turkey. The the snowman, I already told you guys where he spawns, and, and he's like a big concern because he's just going to be bashing this minion while here. Um, I forgot to place down more mages. Uh, the cupid, he spawns right over here, and he's flying. He shoots arrows, and as long as you sit behind a reflector beam, uh, they won't be able to hit you, but those arrows will like slow you down and will prevent you from using your abilities. And I think th I think that they like weaken towers and your um, what's gonna call it? They weaken towers by like their defense and their DPS output at the same time. So they're 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 a real real pain. So make sure that uh, Cupid arrows cannot hit you. So very important that your reflector beams are kind of on point, at least mostly. Uh, I have a lot of extra mana. Um, I did not think I'd have this extra mana. I will... I will do this. Oh, uh, the turkey, right. So, again, I, <laughs> I keep assuming people have watched the extras video, but the turkey spawns all the way over here. Right here. And he has a Virgilian HP, 
Uh, not as much as a snowman. I think he only has like 150 million ish, something like that HP. Whereas the snowman has like 600 million, and the cupid has uh, at least 20 million, but like not that much. So uh, yeah, those are the three bosses. Those are the HPs, and that's what you need to worry about for all of them. The turkey literally does nothing at all unless you're near him, and uh, because we don't have any damage to be able to like deal anything significant, we're never going to be near this turkey. We're just going to be boosting our towers over here. And by boosting, I mean just keeping them up. While you're just completing the map regularly, it is probably worthwhile to go around looking at all the random like weapon rewards, weapon rewards, weapon drops, uh, and also from the chests to see if you get a lupine bow. Uh, it's pretty unlikely, but if you do get one, I mean, now you have a good mana gathering weapon, right? Although I guess I guess you don't have the genie yet, so <laughs> it doesn't count for much. But you you know you know if you get lucky when you're upgrading your minions. You want to have a bit of oh no no uh, you want to have a bit of an upgrade priority in who you upgrade first, and that is your mages. Upgrade your mages first with the minions because they heal their uh, surrounding everything, not everything, all the surrounding minions and players based off of a percentage of their current HP. So if you upgrade them and therefore give them more HP every time they heal, they'll be healing for more. It's also probably worth it to like slap down another uh, spider here so that you can have like a 24-7 constant web going on the uh, snowman. If you can get webbed, I don't know if you can get webbed actually. Quick bit of post commentary here. I actually failed this run because I decided to do the final lay with my jester up instead of my monk. Uh, that, uh, that went pretty badly and I'll show you guys how that went in a little bit. But for now, here's how you do it with a monk. And if you do it with a monk and just tower boost the whole time sitting on top of your towers, you'll have a really, really easy time and you won't have to worry at all about the cupid or the turkey or anything like that. It, it's, it's so easy, so please, for your own sakes, just do it on the monk. Don't do it on the jester. I'm gonna sit right here and pray for the best. Pray, 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 pray. Snowman. Turkey really does nothing. Okay. Do they have beef now? Is there... Oh, it's so loud! It's so loud! Oh, no, no, no! I placed things wrong. I placed things slightly wrong, and one of those arrows got through. That was bad. That is still bad. <laughs> Place your reflectors better than I did! They, it got through my reflectors for a second there. That minion wall is fine, right? Yeah, that minion wall. That minion wall is fine. Can you die already, you fucking bitch, Cupid? Jesus. Holy fuck! How beefy are you? Homie is made out of straight beefium. What? Yo! Get away from there! Oh, that's GG. Hmm. Bro has health health. Oh, that's all of them. He's so beefy, piece of shit. Okay, I'm trying to think of what I what went wrong there. And all I can think of right now is... Wow, I can't believe that happened. I seriously can't believe that happened. So this time, I'm going to go a little bit overboard with my buff beams, with my reflectors. Yes. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Huh? Am I missing a reflector somewhere? Why do I have one extra DU? I have extra DU because I didn't place any reflectors back here. That's cool. I'm stupid. I will adjust this later because this area gets destroyed by goblin copters. Oh, fuck. Okay. One reflector here. Another reflector here. Boom. And then... Fucking... Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I take this reflector from you. You don't deserve it. <laughs> Stupid ass. <laughs> Stupid ass triangle. <laughs> Alright, that's good enough. Never ask a man his salary. Never ask a woman her age. Never ask Beep how many takes he had to do for the intro. <laughs> Funnily enough, I think I would have won last time if I uh, if I had just used a tower boost because that that cupid was really low, and if I had double or triple the damage, he would have been completely dead. 
without even destroying any of my towers. So this time, I will start out on the Bridge of Anger and beat the shit out of the Cupid here, just to get its attention. And then after that, I'll just run around like a monkey. Like just, uh, I'll be just running around this area like in circles, tiny little circles here, to try and make sure that it doesn't destroy these towers right here. If you're following along, just use the monk on the last wave and just tower boost. Especially if you have a genie, just easy clap. <gasps> Lupinbo, look, this is the cool thing. It's poisonous. It's actually got decent stats too. All right, which one of these is worse? All right, cool. We now have a lupine bow. Does it have extra projectiles? It do. Let me show you guys how to upgrade your lupine bow. I, I kind of know how to do it myself. I don't actually know how to do it very well. But uh, you upgrade the base damage and then make sure the projectile speed is maxed out. Uh, first, actually. Make sure projectile speed is maxed out, and then once shots per second and projectile speed is maxed out, you go damage. Not too much, don't go crazy on the damage. You only get it to like, I don't know, I don't know, like five, 1500, I guess. And then get the other damage up a little bit too. This doesn't scale as well, so you can actually get this much higher, but something like that's fine. And then. Yeah, look at that. Alright. So the reason you want a elemental damage that isn't electric on your lupine bow is because the primary damage that your lupine bow will be doing is electric. So if you have an enemy that's immune to electric damage, you won't be doing anything to it and you won't be gaining any mana. But if you have a non-electric secondary damage, you can gain mana from the enemy still. I do not like that this place doesn't have another reflector. <laughs> it just feels wrong. Like, I don't think it matters that much, but it feels, I don't know, it doesn't feel icky. Go gross. This time, make sure. Heal, 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 that's fine. Make sure this stupid fucking Cupid man, I take his attention. Spam mouse one. And then dodging is circling this man. No, 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 shoot me, shoot me, shoot me, shoot me, shoot me, shoot me, shoot me. Okay, he's, he's, be he's, 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 he's balding at me now. He's balding at me. As long as he keeps being mad at me, that's fine. Uh oh. No, 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 don't touch those towers. Those towers didn't do nothing. They don't deserve the heat. Uh, he's also hitting me with, with some of his projectiles. Alright, focus me, bro. Focus me. Alright, time to go brazy. Oh, uh, don't, don't, don't destroy my towers. Oh, he didn't destroy my towers. Okay, cool. <laughs> what the fuck? How did you get through? What the hell? All right, well, uh, that that time it worked better. So yeah, um, if you're doing this, <laughs> just bring a fucking bring a monk for this last wave, honestly. Uh, I guess I'll just keep upgrading these minions so they kill the uh, what's his name faster? Snowman. Snowman die. Now we just wait for the turkey, which is just all the lightning towers. Oh, it's just gonna be the lightning towers. I don't think anything's ever gonna get close to getting through, so I'm just gonna like go eat some food or something. Well, ah, cool, we did it. All right. Uh, I could look on the ground to try and find another lupine bow, but uh, I'm not gonna. Let's check out the rewards, because uh, this map can have some really, really high quality rewards, like really, really high quality. Yes, I explained that really well, didn't I? Oh yeah, like ultimates. Oh, and the accessories can be decent, <laughs> if you're lucky. But uh, it looks like I am not lucky, although that weapon is probably better than what our monk currently has in every way possible. And it's transcendent and we can't equip it. This is why we are here. <laughs> because we cannot equip items because we're low leveled. Okay. Uh, nothing else here is worth looking at, I think. And I don't really care that much about that item. So let's just, you know, and go into survival. For you guys, survival begins instantly. But for me, I, uh, I'm gonna go to sleep. And then, and then wake up tomorrow and then do survival.
And now you guys know that tavern defense is super super easy if you just do the final wave with a monk and tower boost instead of just sitting on your gesture. Uh, I don't know why I didn't do that earlier, but we finally finished the map and we can move into survival to get ourselves the genie, the uh, XP, and if you haven't already gotten one, a lupine bow. The one that I got is pretty good, and while I could look for upgrades because it's definitely not the best, I don't really think I'm going to need to upgrade my lupine bow in any shape, way, or form until like... Or actually, I don't need to do it at all, but I'm not going to bother with it unless I see an ultimate plus plus one or something like that lying on the ground. Because uh, the lupine bow is just for mana gathering, and as long as it serves that purpose, that's all that really matters. So, one thing I should mention for the survival here is that, uh, first of all, it's, it's a lot harder to do the first wave of the survival than it is to do the first wave of the campaign because we're going to have to deal with 12 ogres instead of whatever number we had to deal with last time. So that's going to be wonderful. I also have a bit of a different build for survival than I do for campaign because we don't actually have to worry about any bosses, which means that I can, um, I can lighten up the defenses in certain areas. Namely, that main bridge choke point. I don't have to spam so many like mages and things like that there. Uh, if I remember correctly, the way that I go about it is slapping down two mage minions and two uh, spider minions at each one of these choke points, and then throwing down like uh, four or six, I don't remember the exact number, uh, archer minions at each the each one of the choke points, and that's pretty much it. Also, also, you can do this map on pure strategy instead of survival, and you'll have a much, much easier time doing everything because you don't actually have any mages, not mages, you don't have any jinns or any ogres, sky ogres, uh, what's it called, or uh, sharkins, yes, I uh, can't speak real. But yeah, you don't have any of those things spawning in pure strategy for this map specifically. I don't know why it happens for this map specifically, because I've checked on other maps and they totally have jinns, uh, skycopters, all of them spawn, but for some reason this map doesn't. And the only difference is going to be, as far as I know at least, the only difference is going to be slightly lower like map rewards, like lo lower quality items. But um, if you're just here for the XP and to just like get a Lupine Bow and uh, Genie, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. But I'm going to be doing it on survival because it, this also allows me to upgrade my towers much faster. Doo -doo -doo. All right. Uh, so you, I'm on starting on wave eight of this survival. I think the earliest you can start is on wave seven. But for this, you want to make sure that you're on your gesture and you are kind of on point with all of your buffs, buffs, yes, uh, Wheel of Fortunes. Because 12 Ogres is a lot, and if you have low stats, kind of like we do, it's pretty likely that your Archer minions aren't going to be able to deal with the Ogres alone. So you're going to need to put in some Sword, Sword, Sword on the spin to uh, deal with the Ogres yourselves. Yourselves? Yourself, yes. I hope the audio isn't too terrible. I've noticed that every once in a while the audio will go to shit if I'm like sitting in an enemy's face and just destroying them with a uh, staff or just like a lot of noise going on at once. I, I don't know why that happens. Uh, my best guess is that OBS just doesn't like it and it wants me to know that it doesn't like it. But it does happen and I apologize that that is the case. Okay, uh, now that there are a bunch of ogres spawned in, I'm going to take this time to gesture wheel and do a sword. And boom. I double clicked there on accident, but it worked out. And now, even the ogres back here, who we haven't touched at all, are basically at half health. So that's nice. Again, I do not know why there are like 12 ogres at the start of wave. Uh, it doesn't really make sense. But there aren't any goblin copters on any maps like starting survival wave. So we don't have to worry about that. Or actually, on, any, on the first wave of survival for any map. There we go. That's a much cleaner way of saying what I meant. But because there are so many ogres, and a lot of the time they just get confused with their pathfinding, you can definitely just have a much easier time with this first wave like building things, because uh, they just have so much mana to give. So much mana. You can like fully max out all of these minions, all the auras, all the everything, because there's so, so much mana. Holy hell. Very generous of the ogres to donate their mana. Do -do -do. And again, uh, if you're having a tough time with the Ogres, sword, 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 and they're mostly dead. It shouldn't matter that much, but, you know, just in case you're having a tough time, that's your, like, secret Konami cheat code. Cool. That's that.
now we can move on to the actual building building and it's it's more or less the same uh, not much has changed but the uh, you might you might want to put down more deadly strikers than lightning towers I don't know uh, I'm not 100% sure just because there's gonna be a lot more ogres to deal with but frankly speaking I think what we did originally is perfectly fine uh, and this time you don't have to worry so much about how you place the reflection beams for this back area here because there's not going to be an ogre, not an ogre, uh, there's not going to be a cupid for the towers to be afraid of. I think I just wasted like a thousand mana by picking up those 500 mana crystals lying on the ground. <laughs> That's not good. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, I'm just making sure all the reflector beams are placed properly. I think I went a little overboard somewhere because I think I should only have 61, 60 DU placed so far and not 61. I definitely did. Where did I go overboard with my placements? It might be right here. This might be too long. Uh, all right, lightning towers, deadly striker cha facing this way, facing this way, and facing this general direction. And then just lightning towers after that. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, good, good, good. Last is the minions. If you want to, again, if you want to, you can slap down some reflectors, not reflectors, some buff beams uh, back over here to help those minions, but I've never had a problem with them, so I don't bother with it most of the time. Also, uh, if you don't have a genie, you should only really be here up until wave 15 before you reset, because after wave 15, after wave 15, you can't get any more uh, genies. So if you're here for, you know, all three things at once, it's better to just reset than to, like, you know, keep going at it. And eight, there we go. And then I think, actually, it's supposed to be two archers and two spiders at each place. Uh, two archers and... Two archers? Two spiders and two mages at each place, and not uh, eight... Oh, my lord, I'm not able to speak. I'm using too many archers is what I'm saying. Because this area here should have no trouble with DU. It should like perfectly max out, if I remember correctly. And it definitely isn't because I use too many archer minions. All right, that's fine. I uh, to do as long as you're forming like a decent wall, that's all that really matters. Same thing over here. Uh, I probably shouldn't have sold those there. <laughs> they were actually upgraded, but it doesn't really matter. All right, now slap down the two mages. Uh, wrong button. There we go. Now we can slap down the two mages over here, and that's basically the build. Uh, upgrade priority doesn't really matter that much because we have more than enough stats for everything. But just upgrade the same things in the same order as last time and you'll be perfectly fine. Right. And this here. I will actually move this guy a little bit farther back to make a bit of a tighter wall because I remember some ogre minions kind of blasting through that area as they did last time. Okay, so that's the build, and now it's going to be leveling up the characters as well as just doing the map. So first I'm going to choose the highest level characters, or by that I mean the characters that are closest to getting to level 78, so that we can move on to the new ones faster. So our, what's her name, EV is going to be first, just going to move every character I bring in over to this main stack over here. Then I want our, what's we call it, what's her name, uh, Apprentice next because she's super important. And then last is going to be our Aura Monk, because she's like the last, the last, uh, the last super important character. I'm not bringing in the Huntress just yet, because uh, I'll be honest, my stats for Huntress are probably fine for like literally everything else that you're going to do in this game. Uh, the Huntress really doesn't matter that much. She's kind of a, uh, she finishes quickly, let's say. You're done with the Huntress upgrading things quickly. All right, let's move these gas traps back a little bit and make sure that no enemies spend forever dying to them. That looks good enough. Cool. And now we can just move on. Uh, I won't be able to talk much because the moment that the wave starts, the lightning towers and everything will go extreme noise because all three characters are right here. But all you got to do is just upgrade your towers and uh, buff beams, and that's pretty much it. I feel like 67 million XP is the amount needed to get to level 78. So once we see that number hit on all of these characters down here, uh, then we can swap to the other ones. Oh wow, this is this is significantly better than what we currently have. Pick ah, many many genies. All right, let's see if any of those are actually good. I bet you guys can't hear the in-game audio right now, 
That's because these fucking lightning towers are so loud. Okay, yeah, now you guys can hear it. Uh, all right, so our EV is now level 70, 73, 78, which means we don't have to worry about her. And depending on if we get a good genie, I can, let's see. Uh, this is okay. This genie sucks because negative damage. This one sucks because negative HP. Negative HP once more. Uh, this has a negative ability one. It looks like most of the genies we had, we got, we had, we got, uh, suck. <laughs> so I'm going to try again, try and get a better genie. I'll keep one in the meantime, like reserved, just in case we can't get a better one though. So actually, I'm not going to keep any of these. these <laughs> all of these kind of suck. But I will keep this right here, right here, right here. Oh, and I can show you guys how to do this map if, um, what's McCall? If you don't get a good genie. So, leave on all your characters, G up to start the next wave, and then go back to your tavern and start the map on wave 13, not wave 50. If you start the map two waves, two waves before you're supposed to get your uh, survival reward, you'll actually get it. Otherwise, I just slapped my mic there. Otherwise, you won't get your uh, genies. And also, it should be enough XP so that our monk, our apprentice, and probably not our uh, huntress, but I don't really care about her, for all of them to get to level 78. But yeah, we should also have enough mana to build everything at the very start of the wave. So that's that worry finished. So you guys know the build, it's just the same thing as always, but uh, this time we can actually do everything all at once. Look at that mana, 720 mana per chest. All right, now that all the towers are built, just bring in your three characters again. Uh, it's going to be a lot harder this time because all of your towers aren't fully starred and upgraded and all that. So keep that in mind while you go into the next wave. But uh, just place the characters in the exact same spots as before. And upgrade this buff beam right here, like first. And then after that, it's just the same priority as before. There we go, new genies, and it looks like we still need a little bit of XP to get our other characters up to 78. So let's see if we actually got two good genies in the meantime. This one's okay, and this one sucks. So does this one. Alright, uh, looks like we'll go again for a genie, but we can keep this one for our jester. And that's level 78 on our mage. To do on our monk wrong character on our monk and we are nowhere near level 78 on our huntress uh, for the time being I'm just gonna swap the like mage out for our what's his name for our monk to get him up a little bit uh, it's not super important that he gets up in levels but I would like to level him up if I can and also he'll be using tower boost every once in a while, which will be really nice because it'll speed up the waves a good bit. More Jins. Uh, I really hope that we get good ones now, because three times in a row without getting a good Jin is pretty damn unlucky. But if we do get a good one, I can also show you guys a cool XP farm for... that's a lot of tower stats. Uh, for... Uh, what's we call it? Our Huntress. It looks as though <laughs> we didn't actually get a very good Jin at all. But... We can use probably this one or this one on our monk just in the meantime because they have positive uh, ability one. Although I'll probably stick with this one because we're not dealing that much damage on our monk anyways. So yeah, uh, everything else here kind of sucks. Oh well, time to do the do the time to show you guys the cool XP farm. All right, Ember Mount Volcano, very very hard map, very many difficult things but also a shit ton of XP if you do it properly. I think like if you get all the bonuses correctly, it's somewhere around 10 million XP per character, which is a lot. So uh, hopefully, if I build everything correctly, uh, we'll get that much XP on our Huntress like two or three times in a row, and then we'll be good to move on to the next set of maps. Next set of maps? Yes. Alright, 
So after you place your basic aura stack, place down at least two gas traps per choke point. Uh, if you have lower stats, you might want to do two stacks of auras and two stacks of auras, two stacks of auras, two, st two stacks of auras and two stacks of traps. But I think I have enough stats to where I don't need to do that. But uh, after you place down your traps, you can place down an additional like proximity mine and in inferno if you want. But I'm not going to do that for now. Swaps over to your EV, and uh, you're going to go a little overboard with your reflector beams. So first thing here, place one like this, place one like this, just to prevent any enemies from shooting a crystal. And then after that, I'm just going to slap down a couple like that, because we're going to be placing some, I think, fireball towers? Or maybe not fire. I don't know what exact. I don't remember, actually, uh, what you're supposed to place down. It's been a while since I've done this build. But you're just basically protecting the crystal, and then after that, you're going to be placing down a bunch of lightning towers or mage towers to deal with the rest of the enemies. And I don't have, I don't remember exactly how to do it, but you can do this, do this as low as like, I think, 500 in each stat for all your characters. So this is incredibly easy. But uh, place down one lightning and deadly striker. I think we can do two. Yeah two lightnings and a deadly striker there and then over here it'll just be one lightning and a deadly striker just like that uh, two lightnings okay cool yeah so two lightnings and one deadly at each area swap over to your jester and then bring in your extra characters which is going to be our huntress primarily and our monk and then for extra extra bonus why not throw in our what's his name uh, apprentice because why not so the thing is, you get a one time, one, one, 1 1.3 times XP bonus if you hit an enemy, and the only type of damage you do is uh, player damage on a character. Now our apprentice can't get that because she's shooting things with her towers, but our monk definitely can, and I think our uh, huntress should be able to as well because she's technically only hitting the enemies as a um, through her what's we call it gas traps, and those I don't think count. I don't think those count. But anyways, uh, once you're here, start the wave. And upgrade these buff beams. Upgrade the shit out of them. If you have low stats like I do, you definitely want to make sure that these buff beams are pretty, pretty high upgrade. Because otherwise, uh, you might not be able to get through the waves. As you can see, uh, the enemies here have a lot, a lot of health. Um, that's, I mean, we're not, so that's why we're not quite ready to do this yet. But we can definitely choose the first wave and get ourselves the XP necessary. Oh, don't die. Okay, cool. Now, I can swap over the other characters and get a few hits on some of the enemies, just kind of chilling. Um, if I'm lucky, that is. Oh, I know. Uh, over here, enemies tend to just get congested a lot. I don't know why. I think it's because my towers, towers, my um, gas traps are way too big. But either way, it's a good chance to get some extra damage with our other characters. So just jump down here. Ah, oh, I didn't get any on my. Oh well. But huge XP on everybody. Uh, even our monk, who didn't do anything really. Holy shit, that was a loud car. Even our monk who didn't do anything, it's a bunch, a bunch of XP. But yeah, like 6, 7 million XP per attempt. Our huntress should be done in like 3 or 4 goes of this. Uh, if I do it, I'm not sure I will. But yeah, uh, by the way, second wave you absolutely cannot do because there's a billion enemies, all of which are too tough to actually handle. Lupine bow? Bad lupine bow, negative reload. Alright, uh, I'll just be doing this kind of off-camera, and I'll come back to you guys once the Huntress is level 78. Just realized you can actually make these reflectors like 3 DU fully, because you don't actually care that much about DU, and save yourself some mana. So if you're having trouble placing things, you can just do that instead. Huh? Oh, bro got stuck here. Sword, sword, crystal. There we go. Alright, cool. Our Huntress is level 78, and we can move on to Transcendent Gear, and maybe upgrade some of it. Alright, so I have some sad news for you guys. Uh, this episode is already 50 minutes long, which means I don't think we will have enough time to get our Chicken Baller for the Monk, the, the Mana Gathering weapon. Uh, that's just because the Chicken Baller, the, the way you get it is by doing Crystal Escort, Spring Valley, and this is a really, really annoying map to do. And to be able to do it, we're gonna have to do Mega Citadel and do the survival for this map up to wave like 25. And then we'll have to do this map. And that's gonna be a big, long process. And I think it'll take at least 30 or so minutes to do even with editing. 
And I want to keep these videos under about an hour short, so I'm going to save that for a half, a, uh, half, episode? half episode next week. So for now, um, that's pretty much it. I'll have a, a 4.5 episode uploaded later on this week where we'll be getting the chicken baller. But in the meantime, we have all of the transcendent gear equipped on all of our characters. And I'll start the next episode showing you guys how the transcendent gear looks when we're fully upgraded. And uh, we'll be able to jump into the Karathiki jungle and infested ruins at the start of episode 5 just as planned before. Uh, I think I also might include some quest for completion extras videos because I want to show off lab assault and how cool and fun that is to do. And I want to show you guys uh, boss rush because boss rush is something that I almost always do whenever I'm doing my own regular playthroughs. And uh, I probably should show you guys that route as well. Or maybe not that, not, that, not that route, but it's a very good way to get a solid weapon for our jester. But yeah, for the moment, that's it for the video. Expect episode 4.5 out sometime later this week, so within the next like 7-ish days. And I will see you guys in the next one.